the Phoenicians were the original Ethiopians. The Old Testament and Homer refer to the land of Phoenicia as Canaan and the people as Sidonians. Phoenicia was a narrow strip of land about 250 miles long and from 5 to 15 miles in width along the Mediterranean coast of Syria, being cut off by mountains to the east and the north. It was impossible for Phoenicia, Phoenicia to play a part in any political role. The Phoenicians were merchantmen. The mountains approached within not many miles of the coast, along which from antiquity there had been a caravan route running close to the sea. To the south of Tyre, the cliffs somehow advanced close to the water, the road being hewed out of the living rock. The line of limestone ranges was pierced by deep river valleys. Phoenicians founded their chief cities upon islands along the coast to safeguard their riches from attacks from the mainland. Their towns crowding almost the entire coast together with their harbors and fleets must have presented a spectacle calculated to impress the stranger with their wealth. Phoenicia was first people by Amorites. The Anakim and the Raphaimites, a race gigantic in statue and strength. The Amorites were not of Canaan. In the Egyptian inscriptions, they appear as the Amar, a people with fair hair and blue eyes. They headed one early congress of Babylonia and seemed akin to the blonde Libyans. In the earliest period, the country was under the domination of Babylon, 1800 BC. There were numerous towns. Then they passed under Egyptian control. At the coming of the Hebrews, Beirut, Byblos, and Sidon were very old cities. In their religion, political organization, and colonizing habits, we find no analogy whatever to Semitic forms. Phoenicians said that their cities had been founded by the gods. The nobles claimed descent from the gods, a claim of all Cushite families. The king must be chosen from the nobles. The land belonged to him, but his power was limited. War and peace could be decided in his absence and incited against his will. In Tyre, the high priest of Hercules was the second power in the state. There was a council of elders who were the heads of the most noble families. Were these people living under a Cush Cushite system, Semites? Hebrew records called them Hamites. Leonore Matt says they were Cushites, occupying the coast of the Mediterranean, while the Canites lived further inland. Their primitive cities were part of the empire over which Kephas ruled 40th Nar, capital N-A-R of Conan, capital C-O-N-O-N. The Greeks in their writing knew no such name as Phoenician. They called them Ethiopians. Hebrew writers gave them the same name. Persians affirmed that the family of Phoenicians had in very early times migrated to the shores of the Mediterranean from the Barian Islands and the Indian Ocean. 
Phoenicians had the same tradition of their origin, and it was in the Isles of the Indian Ocean. They were a portion of the widespread empire of Cushites that stretched from India across Arabia, North Africa, circling the Mediterranean and extending up the coast of Western Europe to Norway. Upon linguistic grounds, Phoenicians were not Semitic. This idea rose because in late ages their speech changed to that of their Semitic conquerors. In the Bahrain Islands, we find names like those of the later cities of Phoenicia. Recent excavations on the island reveal objects distinctly Phoenician. This was the original home of the branch of the Cushite race descended from Hercules, which is Nimrod. The explorer Theodore Bent found on the islands fragments of ivory rosettes encircling chains and small ivory statues with shells of ostrich eggs that were colored and scratched and scratched, being evidence of trade with Africa. There were brass and copper pieces, also the remains of drapery that had shrouded the dead. Here on the islands were the two stored tombs of Phoenicia and Carthage. In appearance, Phoenicians had frizzled hair, broad noses, and full lips. This was not the physiognomy. Uh, of Semites. Hebrews spoke of them as a different race from themselves. In features, traditions, and remains, they were Hamites. Tyre and Sidon were found by Aginar, a grandson of Cush. When Tyre was founded, its builders were joined by immigrants from the Bahrain Islands. Josephus said that the antiquity of Phoenicia was as great as that of Egypt and Chaldea. Herodotus affirmed that the Egyptians, Chaldeans, and Phoenicians preserved the memorials of the most ancient traditions of mankind. The Puranas the historical books of India mention the Pala as a colony of Ethiopians which moved out of the original seat later than the colonists that created India and Egypt. Seems to have been the earliest god worshipped in Phoenicia. Following this came the worship of Poseidon or Canaan which was peculiar to all the cities prior to Sidon. Then followed the overthrow of the Canaanites a giant, some of whom amalgamated with the Cushite stock. But Cushites predominated for the supreme temple as Sidon was dedicated to Zeus. There was a widespread worship of Osiris, Isis, and Horus and the land. In Phoenicia, Osiris and Isis were called Adonis and Astarte. Astarte being the Venus of the Romans who was born at Tyre. The monuments of Egypt show these Phoenicians under the dominion of the Cushite dynasties of Egypt. When Egypt and Ethiopia ruled as one land. And this range of Thothamis the third, we find Phoenicians on the sculptures at Thebes, capital T H E B S, Karen Tribute. At the 18th dynasty, they still owed suzerainty. At the death of Amenophis, 
the fourth Phoenicians were under the dominion of the Hittites. Hittites and Phoenicians were distinct families. Phoenicians on the walls of Solomon's temple, which they built, were full-featured Ethiopians. Phoenicians were closely linked with the legends of Greece. In the time of Homer, they carried trinkets, beads, and baubles, which they sold at high price to the simple Greeks who had not yet developed crafts. They kidnapped boys and girls and so increased the taste of the Greeks for luxury that they at last bought costly articles of furniture and dress. The prizes given by Achilles to the Olympian winners were costly objects made by Sudonian women. Sudonians had turned to the sea. When the cavalry inventors of ships dwelt on their coast, the Phoenicians were noted for their embroiderers, their purple dyeing and glass blowing, but Phoenicians merely brought these arts to perfection and spread the knowledge of them. The ancients made navigation a Phoenician invention, though sailing began in ages far anterior to them. The Greek called the North Star by which they steered the Phoenician Star. The speed of their vessels, the Greeks never rivaled. The Phoenicians were the inheritors of older Cushite arts and trade routes. They were the bridge by which the crafts and knowledge of an older age passed over to us. Because of their narrow limits, they were forced to colonization. 1500 BC, Phoenician colonists covered the southern shores of the Mediterranean, even beyond the Pillars of Hercules. The sea was dotted with their vessels. When the Hebrews, 1300 BC, entered Canaan, they were untutored herdsmen. They found Cushite skilled agriculturists occupying towns which were walled. The island cities true to the biblical curse upon Canaan were wicked and idolatrous and ripe for destruction. Ages had passed since Joppa, J-O-P-P-A, was the royal city of Kephas the Ethiopian. Phoenicians had intermingled with Canaanites. Phoenicians were the ancestors of the Berbers, who were preceded across North Africa by Canaanites. Phoenicians were the hot souls who had overcome Lower Egypt. Archaeology confirms these conclusions. Iceland unearthed remains and made extensive discoveries in the ruins of Tyre and Sidon, that give ample proof of the reports of classical antiquity that these people were Ethiopians. Iceland says in his book Sidon, on the 10th of January 1855, some men digging for more treasure hidden in the ancient cemetery of the plain of Sidon called Mohorat, when at the depth of about 12 feet from the surface, they uncovered a sarcophagus upon the lid of which was a Phoenician inscription. The features of the body within were Egyptian with full almond-shaped eyes, the nose flattened and the lips remarkably thick after the Negro mold. 
The whole countenance was agreeable and expressive beyond anything I have ever seen in the deterred monuments of Egypt or Nineveh. The inscription on the lid read, Esmonaza the second. That's capital E S M U N A Z A R, the second, king of Sidon, the son of Tapnit, the grandson of Esnuhaza, the first king of Sidon. This was a physiognomy of the old race. Under the Taurus skies of the east, the Phoenician offered up his children in religious frenzy, causing them to pass through the fire. They practiced mutilation and consecrated lust. To gain the favor of heaven, they practiced sodomy in the temple of Ashtar. They offered up to their gods what they most valued. They were addicted to the sacrifice of the newborn. It was an act of devotion. The figure of El, Saturn, was so shaped that a child might be placed in his arms. This rite can be traced to Arabia, India, Egypt, Gaul, and among Scythians. It was a rite that was canonized for the Greek myth revealed Zeus as abhorrent of human sacrifice. His curse fallen upon families addicted to its practice. Canonized even included the eating of the body. Osiris banned this practice in Egypt. The rite of human sacrifice seems to be Hamitic. It was used to avert the wrath of God. It, in, in later days, a ram was substituted. Abraham was not amazed when God when told by God to sacrifice his only son. Sauce, S-O-Y-C-E, says, The immoralities of the Canaanites practiced in the name of religion were an invention of the race itself. The Cushite nature of Phoenicians was shown, says Baldwin, in that they did not spread themselves by fire and sword as did Assyrians, Persians, and Saracens, but by more peaceful methods that were slower and more certain. No overthrown cities and desolated countries marked their progress, but they created flourishing communities where the inhabitants were skilled in agriculture. They were a diplomatic people as shown in the friendship of Hiram and David. Animated by the desire for prophets, they penetrated the deserts of Arabia, braved the dangers of the Red Seas until they reached happy Araby. And the Ethiopian coast, Solomon's fleet was manned by Phoenicians. They brought back aromatics, gold, silver, ivory, and other products. Phoenicians were master workmen in metals. Their good work was covered with ornamentation that has disappeared. What we now see is the gross support that once upheld the decoration. At Ruad, an immense wall of stone surrounded the city and Antique reservoirs hewed out of the living rock are still used by the people. In order that they might establish themselves in the regions of the West as the power of Assyria, arose and they began to lose their footing in the east. Phoenicians founded Gaze, Gaze, 1100 B.C. The temple of Hercules at Sire was then 1700 years old. We may trace the worship of Hercules, Baal, B-A-A-L, up the coast to western Europe. 
Phoenicians also brought the alphabet. Its spread was vital to the progress of Aryan peoples. The amazing architectural genius of Cushite may be seen in all the ruins of Phoenicia. They occupied old Cushite sites and were an offshoot of the race. We see in Phoenician ruins the vast constructions that astound beholders in Egypt, Nubia, and Arabia. Saturn and Arvad furnished Tyre with her mariners, Persia, Lud, and Foot, P-H-U-T, furnished her army. Kings of the ancient world coveted the rich and precious robes of Tyranian purple. 600 B.C. Assyrian lay siege to Tyre. The inhabitants moved their riches five miles out on an island. The Assyrians had no fleet. There the Tyranians were able to defy them and take their pleasure. It was a Against this seemingly impregnable city that the Hebrew prophets hurled their denunciations. Isaiah said that Tyre would be destroyed by the Chaldeans. Before a generation had passed away, Nebuchadnezzar cast up a mound and after 13 years captured the rich prize. The prophecies, they shall lay thy stones, thy timbers, and thy dust in the water, and thou shalt be no more, were literally fulfilled. Many foresighted citizens of Tyre had moved to Carthage, which had been founded about 813 B.C. It was built on the site of the earlier city 50 years before the Trojan War. The rise of Assyria threatened and the headlong Congress of Persia destroyed the commerce of Phoenicia. As her greatness waned, Carthage succeeded to a supremacy that la lasted 500 years. There was a population of 700,000 men when the city was destroyed by Rome. Carthage might have prolonged her life for another thousand years if it had not been for the hate of Rome. It was the most powerful city of Africa of later antiquity, a rich and powerful state. In extending her commerce, Carthage naturally planted her colonies upon the islands of the Mediterranean. Here she gathered her wares for the traffic with Western Europe and the southern shores of the sea. We find Phoenician relics in the canneries with a dialect of Hermetic speech. From Britain they obtained tin with amber from the Baltic. There were brought south along age-old trade routes. They were related by race to the primitive inhabitants. They had assembling stations in Arabia and on the Persian Gulf. This they traded with India. The link between Phoenicia and her colonists did not seem very binding. It lay in the Kushite religion which they had appropriated and modified. They had the same gods as the other Kushite colonists. Of course, under different names. Living beside the Semites, they had a distinctly Hermetic religion. The Phoenicians' colonies of Cyprus, Rhodes, the Cyclades, and Sporades, with Sicily, Sardinia, and the Balearic Isles, Islands, and Spain all observed minutely Hermetic customs and religion. When they took possession of Palestine, a former stronghold of other branches of Cushites, the Pelasgians and Iberians 
pass across North Africa and on into Southern Europe. We find our colonists hostile to Phoenicians. They were resisted when they sought to colonize Spain. The Romans hated them, and for this reason, we find no Phoenician colonies in Italy or on the Greek main, mainland. Warned by the breakup of their civilization in the East, Phoenicians adopted a policy of secrecy about their Western expeditions to Britain and the Baltic. Because of this, the real truth of early African civilization is unknown. Phoenicians described them as regions of nameless terrors and enchantments. Misha still surrounds the names Ophir, O-P-H-I-R, and Tarshish, capital T-A-R-S-H-I-S-H. Phoenicians gained their knowledge of imperishable dyes from Cretans. They did not originate glass, for it is frequently shown on the early monuments of Egypt though their skill in glass blowing was wonderful. The primitive speech of the Phoenicians was closely related to the South Arabians, which is Ethiopic. Ethiopic. No Semitic nation ever invented a syllable system of writing. Across North Africa had been distinct migrations shown today in three distinct types of Berbers. The first left relics that explorers are assigned to the Iberian race. There are the crouching skeletons of Nubia and of the old race of Egypt. Above these are relics showing the Freezes of animals, gold rings, and bracelets similar to men on in decoration. The next migration was of Canaanites. We see them in the square browed Berber. Following them came the Phoenician ancestor of other Berbers, relics. This family found at Carthage portray Egyptian scenes. In the statuettes, the eyes and head are never Egyptian. The eyes are protruded as in Ethiopians and as the king on earth as sight, singularly expressive. The root of the nose is thick and similar to the pre dynastic faces shown on the monuments of Egypt. This was why the Greeks and Hebrews called them Phoenician. Ethiopians.